Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on India to airmark 75% of defense capital budget for domestic firms, says Defense Minister. Hundreds of Afghan children died in January due to cold weather, says UNICEF. And India's Foreign Secretary calls on Bangladesh PM Hasina in Dhaka. And now for all the details. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Wednesday hailed new energy, commitment and enthusiasm of startups at the Aero India 2023 in southern Bangalore City. He announced the government has planned to keep 75% of defence capital procurement reserved for the Indian defence industry. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Wednesday said startups are more open to adopting new technology architecture, making them essential to India's progress, as he addressed the annual Defence Startup event on the sidelines of the Aero India 2023 in southern Bengaluru city. Singh noted that India is supporting its youth to innovate, thereby empowering them to become job creators and manufacture indigenous defence products, which can reduce India's dependence on imports. Later in the valedictory function and bandhan ceremony of Aero India, he announced 75% of the defence capital procurement budget has been earmarked for domestic industry in financial year 2023-24. to He exuded confidence that with this step, the Indian industry will come forward with more enthusiasm and contribute in making the defence sector more powerful and prosperous. A strong and self-reliant defence industry not only strengthens the security system of the country, but also bolsters the economy, he said. इतना बढ़ता जा रहा है कि पिछले साल इंडियन वेंडर्स से कैपिटल एक्विजिशन के लिए जो शेयर 68 परसेंट किया गया था अमृत काल से प्रेरित होकर वह शेयर आगामी वर्ष यानी 2023-24 के लिए सीधे सीधे 75 परसेंट कर दिया गया है। I repeat यह हिस्सा तीन चौथाई थ्री फोर्थ कर दिया गया है जो लगभग वन लाख करोड़ रुपए बनता है। The Bandhan ceremony witnessed the forging of 266 partnerships, including 201 MOUs, nine product launches, and three transfers of technology worth rupees 80,000 crore. This included MOU between India's public enterprise HAL and Safran of France and launch of vertical launch short-range surface-to-air missile by Bharat Dynamic Limited. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday evening held a telephonic conversation with US President Joe Biden after Indian airline company Air India signed a mega deal of 220 aircrafts with the American manufacturer Boeing. The two leaders welcomed the announcement of the partnership and agreed to bolster the vibrant and mutually beneficial people-to-people -people ties between the two countries. <laughs> India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday held a telephonic conversation with American President Joe Biden after Indian airline giant Air India signed a mega order deal with American aircraft manufacturer Boeing. A statement issued by Indian Prime Minister's office said that both the leaders expressed satisfaction at the deepening of the India-US comprehensive global strategic partnership which has resulted in robust growth in all domains. The two leaders also expressed a keen desire to strengthen bilateral cooperation in space, defence co-production and co-development and knowledge and innovation ecosystems, the statement read. 
The White House in a statement said the Boeing Air India deal will foster over 1 million jobs across 44 states and help Air India meet growing demands for air transportation in India. The two leaders reaffirmed the strength of the US-India relationship and committed to continue working together and in groups like the Quad to advance bilateral economic growth, it said. Indian airline giant Air India on Tuesday signed a mega deal of 470 aircrafts with Boeing catering 220 planes and its rival group Airbus providing the rest. The order is termed as the single largest order ever by any airline. Air India, which went back to its founder Tata Group earlier in 2022, has been looking at revival of its reputation and expansion of its fleet as it struggles with its image for poor service and aging fleet. Pakistan Navy's multilateral exercise Aman 2023, which began on February 10, concluded on Tuesday. Around 50 countries participated in the naval exercise, which included seminars, operational discussions and tactical maneuvers. The multilateral naval exercise Aman 2023, hosted by the Pakistan Navy, which saw the participation from some 50 countries, concluded on Tuesday. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehba Sharif reached on board PNS Muawin on the concluding day and witnessed the International Fleet Review held as part of the culmination ceremony. Later in a tweet, Sharif said the multinational event reflects Pakistan's resolve to work with its partners in the maritime domain. The Aman uh, motto, uh, together for peace, it says it all. Uh, the navies from all over the world from different regions come here uh, to Pakistan every two years and under the banner of Exercise Zaman, they carry out exercises, uh, develop interoperability, share experiences with the overall objective that our seas remain safe and secure and for the progress and prosperity of all. The five-day-long exercise was divided in harbour and sea phases. The harbour phase, which was held from 10 to 12th of February in Pakistan's port city of Karachi, included activities such as seminars, operational discussions, international get-together and pre-sale planning. On the sideline of this phase, Pakistan Navy also hosted International Maritime Expo and Conference, which witnessed around 20 MOUs and signing of one joint venture. The sea phase, which began on 13th of February, was held in Northern Arabian Sea and included the navies performing tactical maneuvers and exercises related to maritime security. Moving on. The United Nations Children's Fund has said that in the past month, scores of children in Afghanistan died due to cold weather and illnesses. The UN body said that Afghanistan's brutal winter has continued to take a heavy toll on the most vulnerable. The United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, said that in the past month, hundreds of children in Afghanistan died due to cold weather and illnesses. UNICEF in a tweet said that Afghanistan's brutal winter continues to take a heavy toll on the most vulnerable and hundreds of children are reported to have died in January. The State Ministry for Disaster Management said that in the past month, 180 people died due to cold, flood and fire and 30 others have been injured. The coldest winter in 15 years, which saw temperatures dip as low as minus 34 degrees Celsius, hit Afghanistan in the middle of a severe economic crisis. Many aid groups have partially suspended operations in recent weeks due to a Taliban administration ruling that most female NGO workers could not work leaving agencies unable to operate many programs in the conservative country. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's main opposition party leader Sajith Premadasa has said that any deal inked by the Sri Lankan government with the IMF must be transparent and they should try to arrive at mutually beneficial agreements. He further said that IMF agreement is integral to Sri Lanka to come out of bankruptcy but must have a pro-people approach. 
Sri Lanka's main opposition party leader Sajid Premadasa has said that any deal inked by Sri Lankan government with the International Monetary Fund IMF must be transparent and they should try to arrive at mutually beneficial agreements. Premadasa while speaking at an event in Colombo said the IMF agreement is integral to Sri Lanka to come out of bankruptcy but must have pro people approach. The island of 22 million people has been battling its worst economic turmoil. since its independence from Britain in 1948 which has forced it to default on loans and seek a bailout from the IMF president ranil wickremesinghe earlier this month said that the island nation is completing the prerequisites to unlock the 2.9 billion dollars IMF bailout and expects rapid approval from the global lender sri lanka is currently focused on getting financing assurances from key bilateral creditors china and japan India the third major creditor agreed to support debt restructuring last month In news from Bangladesh India's foreign secretary Vinay Mohan Quatra on Wednesday paid a courtesy call on Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in Dhaka to foster ties He also held secretary level talks with his Bangladesh counterpart during which both sides reviewed the entire gamut of bilateral partnership to boost cooperation India's Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan Quatra on Wednesday called on Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in Dhaka and reaffirmed India's support for wider and deeper development and economic partnership with Bangladesh. Quatra, who arrived in Dhaka on Tuesday after a visit to Nepal, held talks with his Bangladesh counterpart to review the entire range of bilateral issues, including politics and security, trade and investment, power and energy, defense, connectivity and sub-regional cooperation. India has included Bangladesh as a guest state in the alliances activities after assuming the G20 presidency. As part of this, Bangladesh Foreign Minister will attend ministerial meeting in India in early March, while PM Hasina will attend the G20 summit in New Delhi in September. Some people in India took a deviation from the traditional Valentine's Day celebrations on Tuesday as they hugged and spent time with cows instead of romantic partners to highlight their religious traditions where physical forms of affection in the public are viewed as obscene. Take a look. Cows across India received hugs, kisses and love on Tuesday as many Indians marked Valentine's Day by showing their love for the animals. which are revered as sacred by hindus people in parts of the country fed cows in sheds calling it cow hug day this came after india's animal welfare board earlier issued a statement appealing people to shift the focus and hug cows on valentine's day however after facing immense flack on social media platforms the board withdrew its appeal a resident in ahmedabad city said unlike other young indians who would celebrate the day by going to a club she was following a family tradition of hand feeding cows hamari generation mein sabhi log clubs mein jaate hain party karte hain abhi valentines day manane ke liye but hum log aaj puri family ke sath gai ko ghas khilane ke liye aaye ye hamare sanskar hai humne bado se sikha hai ye sab karne ka a resident of ranchi city said many in india considered cows as mothers as they nurture humans with their milk Veneration of cows has however led to repeated attacks by so-called cow vigilantes on Muslims for slaughtering cattle which is banned in most India for beef and leather. So hamari maa barabar darja diya gaya hai to sab isko maa hi mante hain aur maa hai bhi kyunki maa bhi doodh pilati hai ye bhi doodh pilati hai to isliye hum log ko 365 din aake inko haq karna chahiye. Meanwhile Hindu hardliners in Maharashtra state held protest against Valentine's Day saying it was a western imposition on India and burned teddy bears and posters featuring romantic couples The protest leader Govind Shende said protest by the Bajrang Dal and Vishwa Hindu Parishad had resulted in fewer couples showing public displays of affection which he described as obscene on the holiday Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sajnewsline and follow us on Twitter at sajnewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India.